There are two reasons why uh, the membership of both countries is so intertwined. The first is uh, dependence. That is that although Ireland became an independent state in 1922, it remained a regional economy. It was a, re it was a part of the UK economy with 80% of its exports going to the United Kingdom as late as the early 1960s. In other words, political independence had not been accompanied by economic uh, independence. But of course, the EU also then offered that beguiling prospect that joint membership of the EU would in fact enable Ireland to become more autonomous, have more control. In other words, there was a deep sense in which the pooling of sovereignty that is at the heart of the EU would render Ireland more independent, more autonomous and less dependent than the previous situation. So there was both the negative situation, in other words, the no choice, that Ireland had no choice because of the United Kingdom is, uh, was attempting to join, but equally there was the prospect that membership would bring real benefits. And that is something that's deeply embedded in the attitude of the Irish electorate towards the EU. Unlike the United Kingdom, where we heard in the last, uh, in the last session that there is no great love for the EU. From the beginning, the vast majority of the Irish electorate, and these majorities are relatively stable over time, most Irish people think EU membership is a good thing, that Ireland has benefited from EU membership, and although uh, it is a country with extremely strong national identity, there now is a majority of Irish people who feel that they are both Irish and European. So for all those reasons, that missing ingredient, the effective missing ingredient in the relationship between the United Kingdom and the EU uh, is, was never the case in Ireland. And in fact, one of my colleagues, a very serious student of nationalism, said that if Irish nationalists of the 19th century dreamt of an international state system at which Ireland could become an equal member, a seat at the table, and uh, an entity not dominated by the United Kingdom, then that would have been the EU. In other words, that the EU in some sense has given Ireland the state system uh, that allows it, uh, in a sense, achieve what uh, that level of autonomy and independence. So uh, I'm very struck in uh, the debate in the United Kingdom on the voice, uh, or I, I'm very reminded of Hirschman's voice, exit and loyalty. The EU is all about voice. It's about a seat at the table. It's about having sufficient influence over what is happening. It's a, about an ability to shape outcomes. And it's a system that is multi-layered. It is a system in which there is a very high consensus threshold. In other words, very little voting happens uh, in the EU. Most decisions are taken by consensus. And therefore, the ability of all states to have that voice, to have an ability to influence, matters both to the large and to the small, because it's, it, there always has to be a very sizable winning coalition for anything to happen in the EU. So for that reason, mostly countries would prefer voice over exit. It, it, the logic would be that voice matters in a highly interdependent world, the one we have, rather than exit. So it, has to t it is an extraordinary historical event that this country is now going to vote on its membership of this system. One, one would usually expect that political elites would avoid exit questions, uh, if at all possible, uh, because of the uncertainty and contingency that this involves. Also, no country ever gets the EU that it wants. The EU, by definition, is heavily compromised. But I think what Annan said is absolutely right in the last session, and that is that the United Kingdom has got more of the EU that it wants than many other countries. In other words, it has always been able, from the Maastricht Treaty onwards, eh, to have the opt-outs. It's the most exceptional country within the EU. It has more opt-outs for more things eh, than, than anyone else. But that, for a sizable proportion of the electorate, as we heard, may not be enough. In other words, absolute exit uh, may trump. 
But of course, then the question for the United Kingdom is, what relationship will it then have? In other words, it is half in now, but what ha or half out, you could argue, uh, now. But what happens if there's an exit decision uh, and what sort of uh, arrangement uh, will, it, will it come to? And this really matters to the country that I come from. And just to give you a sense in which uh, this is it's a, on daily newspapers, radio and television. This referendum is being watched all of the time. Uh, there was an article in the Irish Times last week and it was called A Vote for Ireland's Future. In other words, the electorate of this country are taking a vote that the Irish electorate have no, uh, no voice, but one that, will, uh, one that will have a major impact on them. And why is that? The reasons are, of course, because reasons of kinship and family, reasons of uh, geographical location and history. The uh, family ties, the people-to-people -people ties between the two islands are extremely strong. And the Dublin to London air route is the second busiest air route, not in Europe, in the world. There is almost incessant contact across these two islands. The second reason, of course, is that for history. And there's a great, in a sense, irony in the fact that on the 23rd of June, uh, the, vote, uh, the vote in the United Kingdom is matched with an event 100 years ago on the 24th of April 1916, when a small group of Irish insurgents started the rebellion that led to the foundation of the Irish state. Because it could have happened that, in fact, the referendum that is now happening could have also included Ireland if the Irish state had not been established uh, in 1922. And there was nothing foreseen that Ireland would have become an independent state. The, it was a set of, in a sense, there was a pretty small rebellion that inex inexorably led to uh, Irish independence. But it may not have happened. And that's why one can't predict what the consequences of the vote on the 23rd of June will be uh, in any, we can make judgments, we can establish scenarios, but we really don't know. Because no one knew on the week, Easter week 1916, that this would in inevitably and inexorably lead to the foundation of a second state on, on these islands. The other reason why this referendum matters is that Ireland has been through an extremely uh, difficult and deep recession. It was one of those countries that was most troubled by uh, the Great Recession. The reasons for this, in my view, were entirely domestically generated. Uh, it was, and uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the availability of very cheap capital because of Euro membership. But Ireland is now has uh, displayed an extraordinary resilience in terms of its economy is now back in growth and growth this year will be about 5% last year over that. Unemployment is now back down from 15.6% to just over 8%. So the economy is recovering. But the legacy politically has been extraordinary. Ireland now has, as many other democracies in Europe, but not just in Europe, very fractious and fractured politics. Uh, Ireland had an election on the 26th of February and does not yet have a government. And therefore, the Irish recovery, in my view, is vulnerable. Uh, it, any uncertainty and instability in the region is not good for a country that is still in recovery with the legacy of the, uh, with the, legacy of the crisis. Moving to the consequences of a uh, the departure of the United Kingdom from the EU. Well, all uh, from the beginning, the Irish government has been deeply concerned. The Prime Minister's office set up a special unit to monitor and watch everything that was happening long before the renegotiations. Uh, every important Irish institution, be it the Economic and Social Research Council, the employers' organisations, the trade unions, uh, university economists, they have all done the reports on what the costs and consequences are. Uh, in, the, uh, in the 2015 risk assessment by the Irish government, it listed three concerns or three areas 
uh, that were likely to be impacted in the event of uh, an exit of the United Kingdom. Firstly, the uh, impact on joint membership of the EU. In other words, the pursuit of Irish interests within the EU and how those would be affected by an exit. In other words, the exit of an ally. The second is the impact on the bilateral relationship and the third on Northern Ireland. And I would like to begin with the third because for me, yes, the economy matters. Uh, yes, Ireland's and the UK's joint relationship within the EU matters. But the much more worrying is Northern Ireland. Why? Northern Ireland, by the 1990s, achieved a level of institutional stability that meant that the conflict across the two communities moved to a non-violent phase. The conflict is not over. There are more peace walls in Northern Ireland today than there were 30 years ago. But at least now, it is non-violent. And that is an extraordinary achievement of the politicians of that part of these islands, but also of successive British and Irish governments. But one shouldn't underestimate the impact of joint EU membership in helping and in creating the conditions that led to the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, the normalization of British-Irish relations within the EU helped. The fact that uh, British Prime Ministers and Irish Taoiseach would always meet at European Council meetings on the margin out of the glare of, uh, out of the glare of the cameras to discuss Northern Ireland. But also, EU money and also the way in which it is spent made a difference. Interreg, peace, the peace money, the insistence on the EU that everything was cross-community created a space to bring those communities together. It helped ease and lubricate the relationships in ways that without the EU it couldn't have happened. And although one would have to in historical terms say that the United States was the key geopolitical player with the two governments, the EU was the silent presence that made a difference. I can't explain to you how it mattered that commission officials from Germany or from the Netherlands would rock into Belfast and not know the history and expect people to sit around the table and take decisions in the interests of the community. And they were blind to the divisions that no one from these islands could have avoided. And it really made a difference. So we don't know what will happen. The United Kingdom itself in the event of uh, it leaving the EU we can't predict what the impact will be on Scotland and in turn what the impact will be on Northern Ireland. And that is unpredictable. And therefore, one could see over a historical cycle that the whole question of the status of Northern Ireland comes into play in a very different way. And if that happens, it will go to the heart of the nature of the Irish political system and the nature of the Irish state. So for me, Northern Ireland is much more serious than any of the rest. Yes, there's talk border controls would be re-established, etc. Et we don't know. We don't know. But anything that hardens the border between the north and south is not good for the island of Ireland. Anything that hardens that border eh, is not good. And we should never, eh, because in my view, the conflict is simply at a non-violent stage, eh, one should one would hope that that's the case uh, and that we won't see uh, uh, communal conflict re-emerge. But we know that politics of divided societies are extremely, uh, extremely fragile. Secondly, in negotiating allies in the EU, uh, apart from agriculture, the UK and Irish governments are usually on the same side in EU negotiations. On the budget and on agriculture, never, but on almost all other issues on the same side, both common law countries, I think the Irish would be extremely worried about the absence of another uh, and bigger common law country. They tend to have the same attitudes towards trade, liberalisation, open economy and regulation. So the loss of the, but Ireland would not be the only country that would feel the loss of the United Kingdom as an ally in the EU. But Ireland does not want an EU uh, 
uh, without, uh, without the United Kingdom. The economy. I could, I mean, there's been lots and lots of, of, of uh, lots and lots of work done. Uh, the ESRI, which is a, probably the best economic, uh, economic uh, as, has the best economic assessment, it says under the worst case scenario, bilateral trade between the UK and Ireland could decline by 20% in the worst case scenario. No one thinks that the exit of the United Kingdom will be good for the Irish economy. Uh, Ireland still exports a lot, and particularly agri-food to the United <coughs> Kingdom. Uh, and of course, doing a deal on agriculture, there's a lot of talk about the single market, doing a deal on agriculture would be extremely difficult uh, in the event of a Brexit. Energy, Ireland gets, 30, uh, Ireland gets approximately 90% of its gas and oil through the United Kingdom. The uh, electricity connector, there is a common uh, electricity market on the island of Ireland. Migration. Ireland and Britain have had a common labour market since the foundation of the Irish state. Uh, there are, at, on 2011 figures, 400,000 people born in the Republic of Ireland resident in the United Kingdom today. But interestingly, there are 230,000 uh, people of British descent resident in the Irish Republic, which for the size of the country in proportionate terms uh, is very large. So that ease of contact, the people-to-people -people contact that's, uh, that's there, uh, what will happen? Will there be also a hardening there? There's been issues about the Irish banks, Irish banks, uh, what will happen, AIB, which is uh, uh, quite an important business here. So. There are a lot of uncertainties and contingencies for the economy. None of it is good. Uh, so what the Irish government, I would say, is uh, on watch. Uh, it would, and this I think would go beyond the Irish government to the Irish electorate, they would like to see uh, the United Kingdom remain a member of the EU. What will happen if the UK decides to leave? And here I'm not talking about the, uh, a relationship that the United Kingdom will have, but rather, would an Irish uh, government and its electorate be tempted to follow? And the answer is no. The Irish state will not leave the EU if the United Kingdom does. It would be, for the Republic of Ireland, it would be an extraordinary historical reversion to dependence on the United Kingdom, uh, and it will not, it will not happen. Uh, the Irish government would, of course, encourage and has encouraged uh, all Irish resident, residents in the United Kingdom to vote and to vote to remain. Uh, and I think if there are any fine-grained analyses available afterwards, you would find that most of the Irish uh, who vote in this referendum will vote to remain.